Gold was among the main metals to be mined in light of the fact that it normally happens in its local structure, that is, not joined with different components, since it is wonderful and perpetual, and on the grounds that perfect articles can be produced using it. Craftsmen of old civic establishments utilized gold richly in designing burial chambers and sanctuaries, and gold articles made over 5,000 years prior have been found in Egypt. Especially essential are the gold things found by Howard Carter and Lord Carnarvon in 1922 in the burial chamber of Tutankhamun. This youthful pharaoh governed Egypt in the 14th century BC. A display of a portion of these things, called Fortunes of Tutankhamun, pulled in excess of 6 million guests in six urban communities during a visit through the United States in 1977-79. The graves of aristocrats at the old citadel of Mycenae close to Nauplian, Greece, found by Heinrich Schliemann in 1876, yielded an incredible assortment of gold dolls, veils, cups, diadems, and gems, in addition to many adorned dots and fastens. These rich masterpieces were made by talented skilled workers over 3,500 years prior. Antiquated Gold Sources The antiquated developments seem to have gotten their provisions of gold from different stores in the Middle East. Mines in the locale of the Upper Nile close to the Red Sea and in the Nubian Desert Territory provided a significant part of the gold utilized by the Egyptian pharaohs. At the point when these mines could not, at this point satisfy their needs, stores somewhere else, potentially in Yemen and southern Africa, were abused. Craftsmen in Mesopotamia and Palestine presumably got their provisions from Egypt and Arabia. Late investigations of the Mard Adh Dahab, signifying support of gold, mine in the current kingdom of Saudi Arabia uncover that gold, silver, and copper were recuperated from this area during the rule of King Solomon, 961-922 BC. The gold in the Aztec and Inca depositories of Mexico and Peru accepted to have come from Colombia, albeit some without a doubt was acquired from different sources. The conquistadors looted the depositories of these human advancements during their investigations of the New World, and numerous gold and silver articles were dissolved and projected into coins and bars, obliterating the precious ancient rarities of the Indian culture. Gold is a medium of exchange. Countries of the present reality utilize gold as a vehicle of trade in money-related exchanges. An enormous piece of the gold loads of the United States is put away in the vault of the Fort Knox Bullion Depository. The depository, situated around 30 miles southwest of Louisville, Kentucky, is under the oversight of the director of the Mint. Gold in the depository comprises of bars about the size of normal structure blocks, 7 by 3 5/8 by 1 and 3 quarters inches, that weigh about 27.5 pounds each, around 400 official ounces, one official ounce approaches about 1.1 avoirdupois ounces. They are put away without wrappings in the vault compartments. Beside money-related utilizations, gold, similar to silver, is utilized in gems and unified products, electrical electronic applications, dentistry, the airplane aeronautic trade, human expressions, and clinical and compound fields. Gold price regulation and variability. The adjustments popular for gold and supply from homegrown mines in the previous 20 years reflect value changes. After the United States liberated gold in 1971, the cost expanded extraordinarily, momentarily arriving at more than $800 per official ounce in 1980. Since 1980, the cost has stayed in the scope of $320 to $460 per official ounce. The quickly rising costs of the 1970s supported both experienced explorationists and beginner miners to recharge their quest for gold. Because of their endeavors, numerous new mines opened in the 1980s, representing a significant part of the extension of gold yield. The sharp decreases in utilization in 1974 and 1980 came about because of scaled-down requests for adornments, the significant utilization of manufactured gold, and speculation items, which thusly reflected quick cost expansions in those years. Properties of gold. Gold is known as a respectable metal, an alchemistic term, since it doesn't oxidize under customary conditions. Its synthetic image O is gotten from the Latin word, aurum. 
In unadulterated structure gold has a metallic radiance and is sun yellow, yet combinations of different metals, like silver, copper, nickel, platinum, palladium, tellurium, and iron, with gold make different shading tones going from silver white to green and orange red. Unadulterated gold is moderately delicate, it has about the hardness of a penny. It is the most pliant and pliable of metals. The particular gravity or thickness of unadulterated gold is 19.3 contrasted with 14.0 for mercury and 11.4 for lead. Sullied gold, as it regularly happens in stores, has a thickness of 16 to 18, though the related waste stone, gang, has a thickness of about 2.5. The distinction in thickness empowers gold to be concentrated by gravity and grants the detachment of gold from earth, residue, sand, and rock by different disturbing and gathering gadgets like the gold skillet, rocker, and sluice box. Gold Amalgam Mercury has a synthetic liking for gold. At the point when mercury is added to gold-bearing material, the two metals structure a mixture. Mercury is subsequently isolated from blend by answering. Extraction of gold and other valuable metals from their minerals by treatment with mercury is called mixture. Gold breaks down in water regia, a combination of hydrochloric and nitric acids, and in sodium or potassium cyanide. The last dissolvable is the reason for the cyanide cycle that is utilized to recuperate gold from second-rate mineral. Finus, carats and troy ounces. The level of immaculateness of local gold, bullion, bars or ingots of crude gold, and refined gold is expressed as far as gold substance. Fineness characterizes gold substance in parts per thousand. For instance, a gold piece containing 885 pieces of unadulterated gold and 115 pieces of different metals, like silver and copper, would be viewed as 885 fine. Carrot demonstrates the extent of strong gold in an amalgam dependent on an aggregate of 24 sections. Along these lines, 14 carat, 14 K, gold shows an arrangement of 14 pieces of gold and 10 pieces of different metals. By chance, 14 K gold is generally utilized in adornments produce. Carrot ought not be mistaken for carrot, a unit of weight utilized for valuable stones. The essential unit of weight utilized in managing gold is the official ounce. One official ounce is identical to 20 troy penny weights. In the adornments business, the regular unit of measure is the penny weight, DWT, which is comparable to 1.555 grams. The expression, gold filled, is utilized to depict articles of adornments made of base metal which are covered on at least one surfaces with a layer of gold compound. A quality imprint might be utilized to show the amount and fineness of the gold composite. In the United States no article having a gold combination covering of under 10 carat fineness may have any quality imprint attached. Lower limits are allowed in certain nations. No article having a gold compound bit of short of what 1 20th by weight might be checked, gold filled, yet articles might be stamped, moved gold plate gave the relative division and finest assignments are likewise appeared. Electroplated adornments things conveying in any event 7 millionths of an inch, 0.18 micrometers, of gold on critical surfaces might be named, electroplate. Plated thicknesses not exactly this might be checked, gold glimmered, or gold washed. Arrangement of primary gold deposits, load gold. Gold is generally scant in the earth, however it happens in a wide range of sorts of rocks and in various topographical conditions. In spite of the fact that scant, gold is concentrated by geologic cycles to shape business stores of two chief sorts, jackpot, essential, stores and placer, optional, stores. Jackpot stores are the objectives for the hard rock miner looking for gold at the site of its affidavit from mineralizing arrangements. Geologists have proposed different speculations to clarify the wellspring of arrangements from which mineral constituents are hastened in jackpot stores. One generally acknowledged theory recommends that numerous gold stores, particularly those found in volcanic and sedimentary rocks, shaped from circling groundwaters driven by heat from assortments of magma, liquid stone, interrupted into the Earth's outside inside around 2 to 5 miles of the surface. 
Dynamic geothermal frameworks, which are abused in pieces of the United States for regular boiling water and steam, give an advanced simple to these gold storing frameworks. A large portion of the water in geothermal frameworks begins as precipitation, which moves descending through cracks and penetrable beds in cooler pieces of the outside and is drawn along the side into territories warmed by magma, where it is passed upward through breaks. As the water is warmed, it disintegrates metals from the encompassing rocks. At the point when the warmed waters arrive at cooler rocks at shallower profundities, metallic minerals encourage to frame veins or cover like metal bodies. Another theory proposes that gold-bearing arrangements might be ousted from magma as it cools, accelerating metal materials as they move into cooler encompassing rocks. This theory is applied especially to gold stores situated in or close to masses of granitic stone, which address cemented magma. A third theory is applied chiefly to gold-bearing veins in transformative rocks that happen in mountain belts at mainland edges. In the mountain building measure, sedimentary and volcanic rocks might be profoundly covered or pushed under the edge of the mainland, where they are exposed to high temperatures and pressing factors bringing about compound responses that change the stones to new mineral arrays, transformation. This speculation recommends that water is removed from the stones and relocates upwards, hastening metal materials as pressing factors and temperatures decline. The mineral metals are thought to start from the stones going through dynamic transformation. The essential worries of the miner or digger keen on a jackpot store of gold are to decide the normal gold substance, tenor, per ton of mineralized rock and the size of the store. From these information, appraisals can be set aside of the installment's worth. Quite possibly the most generally utilized techniques for deciding the gold and silver substance of mineralized rocks is the fire test. The outcomes are accounted for as official ounces of gold or silver or both per short avoirdupois ton of metal or as grams per metric ton of mineral. Centralization of gold in placer deposits. Placer stores address centralizations of gold got from jackpot stores by disintegration, breaking down or deterioration of the encasing rock, and resulting focus by gravity. Gold is very impervious to enduring and, when liberated from encasing rocks, is conveyed downstream as metallic particles comprising of dust, pieces, grains, or chunks. Gold particles in stream stores are regularly focused on or close to bedrock, since they move descending during high water periods when the whole bed heap of sand, rock, and stones is fermented and is moving downstream. Fine gold particles gather in discouragements or in pockets in sand and rock bars where the stream current loosens. Centralizations of gold in rock are designated pay streaks. Prospecting for placer deposits. In gold-bearing country, miners search for gold where coarse sands and rock have collected and where, dark sands, have focused and settled with the gold. Magnetite is the most well-known mineral in dark sands. However other substantial minerals like cassiterite, monazite, ilmenite, chromite, platinum bunch metals, and a few gemstones might be available. Placer stores have framed in a similar way all through the Earth's set of experiences. The cycles of enduring and disintegration make surface placer stores that might be covered under rock garbage. Albeit these fossil places are in this manner solidified into hard shakes, the shape and attributes of old waterway channels are as yet unmistakable. Free gold assay. The substance of recoverable free gold in placer stores is dictated by the free gold measure technique, which includes mixture of gold-bearing concentrate gathered by digging, pressure-driven mining, or other placer mining activities. In the time frame when the cost of gold was fixed, the normal practice was to report examine results as the estimation of gold, in pennies or dollars, contained in a cubic yard of material. Presently results are accounted for as grams per cubic yard or grams per cubic meter. Through lab research, the US Geographical Survey has grown new techniques for deciding the gold substance of rocks and soils of the Earth's outside. These strategies, which identify and measure the measures of different components just as gold, incorporate nuclear assimilation spectrometry, neutron initiation, and inductively coupled plasma nuclear emission on spectrometry. These techniques empower fast and very touchy examinations to be made of huge quantities of tests. Early Gold Finds and Production 
Gold was created in the Southern Appalachian locale as right on time as 1792 and may be as ahead of schedule as 1775 in Southern California. The disclosure of gold at Sutter's Mill in California started the gold rush of 1849-50, and many mining camps sprang to life as new stores were found. Gold creation expanded quickly. Stores in the Mother Lode and Grass Valley areas in California and the Comstock Lode in Nevada were found during the 1860s, and the Cripple Creek stores in Colorado started to create gold in 1892. By 1905 the Tanapa and Goldfield stores in Nevada and the Alaskan Placer stores had been found, and United States gold creation interestingly surpassed 4 million official ounces a year A level kept up until 1917. During World War I and for certain years from that point, the yearly creation declined to around 2 million ounces. At the point when the cost of gold was raised from $20.67 to $35 an ounce in 1934, creation expanded quickly and again surpassed the 4 million ounce level in 1937. Not long after the beginning of World War II, gold mines were shut by the War Production Board and not allowed to return until 1945. From the finish of World War II through 1983, homegrown mine creation of gold didn't surpass 2 million ounces yearly. Since 1985, yearly creation has ascended by 1 million to 1.5 million ounces consistently. Before the finish of 1989, the total yield from stores in the United States since 1792 arrived at 363 million ounces. Utilization of gold. Utilization of gold in the United States went from around 6 million to in excess of 7 million official ounces each year from 1969 to 1973, and from around 4 million to 5 million official ounces each year from 1974 to 1979, though during the 1970s yearly gold creation from homegrown mines went from around 1 million to 1.75 million official ounces. Since 1980 utilization of gold has been almost steady at somewhere in the range of 3 and 3.5 million official ounces each year. Mine creation has expanded at an enlivening speed since 1980, coming to around 9 million official ounces each year in 1990, and surpassing utilization since 1986. Before 1986, the equilibrium of supply was acquired from optional, piece, sources and imports. Absolute world creation of gold is assessed to be about 3.4 billion official ounces, of which more than 66% was mined in the previous 50 years. Around 45% of the world's complete gold creation has been from the Witwaters Rand locale in South Africa. The biggest gold mine in the United States is the Homestake Mine at Lead, South Dakota. This mine, which is 8,000 feet down, has represented very nearly 10% of all-out United States gold creation since it opened in 1876. It has consolidated creation and stores of around 40 million official ounces. Scattered deposits and byproduct gold. In the previous 20 years, second-rate scattered gold stores have gotten progressively significant. In excess of 75 such stores have been found in the western states, generally in Nevada. The primary significant maker of this kind was the Carlin store, which was found in 1962 and began creation in 1965. From that point forward a lot more stores have been found nearby Carlin, and the Carlin zone currently involves a significant mining area with seven working open pits delivering in excess of 1,500,000 official ounces of gold each year. Around 15% of the gold created in the United States has come from mining other metallic minerals. Where base metals like copper, lead, and zinc are saved, either in veins or as dispersed mineral grains, minor measures of gold are regularly kept with them. Stores of this sort are dug for the prevalent metals, yet the gold is additionally recuperated as a result during preparing of the mineral. Most side effect gold has come from porphyry stores, which are enormous to the point that despite the fact that they contain just a limited quantity of gold per ton of mineral, such a lot of rock is mined that a considerable measure of gold is recuperated. The biggest single wellspring of result gold in the United States is the porphyry store at Bingham Canyon, Utah, which has delivered around 18 million official ounces of gold since 1906. Part of a geologist in gold prospecting. 
Geologists inspect all variables controlling the inception and emplacement of mineral stores, including those containing gold. Molten and transformative rocks are concentrated in the field and in the research facility to acquire a comprehension of how they went to their current area, how they solidified to strong stone, and how mineral bearing arrangements framed inside them. Investigations of rock structures, like folds, blames, cracks, and joints, and of the impacts of warmth and tension on rocks propose why and where breaks happened and where veins may be found. Investigations of enduring cycles and transportation of rock trash by water empower geologists to foresee the most probable spots for placer stores to shape. The event of gold isn't fanciful, its quality in different rocks and its event under varying ecological conditions observe common laws. As geologists increment their insight into the mineralizing measures, they improve their capacity to discover gold. If you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a like and subscribe to life is often if you haven't already click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.